Disclaimer. This video involves a lot of me talking. Now, I'm going to try and up my tone a bit and come down my tone a bit, but you might find it boring. I'm talking about drifting. I really like drifting. Today's Valentine's Day. I'm sat on my own in my flat and I'm thinking I'm going to make a video about drifting. So I hope you enjoy it, but you are going to have to put it in my voice for quite a long time. If it's not your thing, then wait for the next video. We'll be working on the DC2 at the weekend. Right, I've been thinking about making a video like this for a while. I'm totally new to drifting and I'm having a lot of fun learning what to do with drifting and you know, finding my feet with it. So I thought, there's probably a lot of people out there sat thinking, hey, I wouldn't mind a go at that. So I'm gonna make a quick video and it's just gonna be a quick overview of you know drifting, how to get into it, uh, where to look for tracks and what to do when you're finally in the seat on the track waiting to go. So you want to get into drifting. That's what I said a couple of months ago, and I've had a lot of fun just getting started. Drifting's good because it doesn't really matter what the weather is, which in England is <laughs> usually raining. Um, when I'm doing track days and stuff in my Integra, you know, rain can ruin the day, but in drifting it just makes it more interesting. Before I get too far into this video, I just want to say, I know there'll be a lot of people thinking, hang on, you've only just started, you know, what do you know? Well, I am new, and it really doesn't matter how many times you watch the Drift Bible or how many times you've watched through Initial D. The best thing you can do when it comes to learning to drift is just getting out there and doing it. As I've said before in other videos, I like to make these not just for you guys, but for also for me to look back on in the future. Maybe I'll look back in here and think, what a load of shit I was talking back then. Maybe I'll look back and, you know, I'll have some sick S body and I'll be flicking it here, there and everywhere. But right now, I'm new to this, and I just want to share my experiences thus far. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to get into drifting is a drift car. Now, I've thought of three suggestions, and two of which I thought I would never recommend. But I've seen these cars out on newbie drift days, and even the experienced drift days, and I've seen them kicking ass, so these are the three that I recommend. Now, my first recommendation should be pretty obvious, BMW 3 Series. Now as most of you know, I am a BMW fanboy, so picking my first drift car was quite easy. The 3 Series is probably the most popular amateur drift car I'd say, based on what I've seen at least. Just having a quick look on eBay tonight and the prices of E36s does seem to have gone up a bit. You can still pick up a nice 328 for, I don't know, around a grand £1500. Um, but also worth checking out would be a 6 cylinder E46. Now the early models, uh, like the pre-facelift 1999-2000 models, they are pretty cheap. I mean, I found this one, this looks alright. Um, should do the job, just weld the diff and get gone. You see loads of these cars on drift days and you know they're never doing badly, so they're always a good solid choice for a first drift car. Now the next car that I'm going to um, suggest here is a car that I never thought I'd be suggesting to anyone for anything. Uh, I always thought these cars were underpowered, overhyped, and they had way too many special editions on Gran Turismo. While that may all be true, they do seem pretty good at drifting. Now the ones that I've seen go, they've not been completely standard, you know, they've had a few mods done, but the Destroy or Die guys, the Will Ashcroft and Dan, they get some serious angles and, and look like they're having a seriously good time when they're drifting their MX-5s about. Now, I've seen these cars at Free Sisters twice and at Seaside, and yeah, they, they everything that I used to think I knew about MX-5 just got blown out of the water. Um, I guess low weight and you know not having a lot of power to play with does give you a good base to get some good drifting knowledge as well. When you speak to these MX-5 guys when you're at the circuit, they always say the same thing: power isn't everything. They have to know their car inside out to get the MX-5 to go sideways. Hopefully one day I'll get to have a go in one of these cars, maybe if I keep mentioning it on my video, hello. I'd love to have a go in one of these MX-5 drift cars, and maybe then my opinion will be changed for good, but we'll see. But yeah, just based on what I've seen, they do look like a good place to start. The only thing with the MX-5 for me is, unless they've got a bucket seat, I simply just don't fit. And I don't think anyone else over 6 foot will uh, be too comfortable in one. But I imagine with the bucket seat in there, it should be a bit better. Okay, last recommendation. Now, 
I never thought about this car as a drift car until I went to a drift day and saw them. Lexus IS200. Now these cars only have about 155 horsepower I think and they're not exactly light to start with but I've seen just as many of these cars on drift days as I have Sylvia's or Skyline. They are really popular and you know they do seem to go well. Um, I'm guessing they just weld the diff, strip them out and go for it but I've seen these cars for as little as 500 pounds like for a full car as well so you know it's definitely worth considering if you want to get in a super budget and of course it is a Toyota underneath so there is some kind of JDM heritage there I guess before you get carried away on the JDM thing though just don't forget that uh, Alan Partridge used to have one as well Just on a side note, if anyone's feeling brave, Mazda RX-8s are getting pretty cheap. I've seen a couple on drift days as well, and you know, I think I'd be far too worried about it blowing up, but that could be pretty cool, right? Alright, so now you've got your drift car, where do you go drifting? Now one thing I'll say is, no matter how many roundabouts you can slide around, drifting is a totally different game. I've owned many rear-wheel drive cars over the years, and I learned so much more on my first drift day than I did it all the time just messing around on the road. And don't mess about on the road either because it's dangerous. The place I'd say to go to first would definitely be Santa Pod. Now if you're from England then Santa Pod's pretty central to most places. They have the drift what you've brung days where you can literally just take anything you've got and drift it. Uh, you can drive there or you can trailer your car up, it doesn't need to be road legal. Santa Pod's a good place to start in my opinion because of the play pens they've got. You can start off doing like figure of eights and you know basic circles just to get your confidence up so you can feel how the rear of the car steers with your right foot. After you've done that you can move up to the kidney bean section which is a little enclosed area uh, where you can start practicing kind of linking and transitioning a few corners. Um, you're doing these at low speed like maybe 20 miles per hour max but they're a good way to um, really find your feet. I know Adam from 621 really enjoyed this area on his first drift day, and he said it was you know, a really good place to get a good feel for the car. Once you've done with the play pens and the kidney at Santa Pod, you can move on to the big track. Now, it sounds daunting at first, but there's plenty of runoff at Santa Pod, which means plenty of room for error. The infield sections, just cones as well, there's, there's no walls to hit. Um, so you can really start throwing the car and getting a feel for it without too much danger of crashing. One thing to note though at Santa Pod is that the big track is super bumpy for some reason. Now the little infield section on the back is fairly flat but certainly around the first few corners for some reason the layout is just... I don't know, if, if my car was any lower I think I'd have serious problems and already on the day I started noticing a few things starting to knock at the back end and. I'm pretty sure that Santa Pod killed my rear diff bushings. Um, so it might be an idea to get some poly bushes before you go. That's what I'm going to do before I go back at least. But yeah, Santa Pod's definitely the best place to start out, I would say, out of the three tracks I've done so far. The play pens are really good just to, to get a feel for it. I mean, I know I said in my previous video you could do that in Tesco's, but obviously you shouldn't do that. That was a joke. Go to Santa Pod and learn there. It's good. Right, moving on from Santa Pod, the other two tracks I've done have both been go-karting tracks. Now, I don't know, it seems to be a theme. Now the go-karting tracks usually have tight corners, but the tracks are wide, so there's plenty of room to get the car out and get sideways. Now as these are proper tracks, in a sense, they do impose a slight fear factor, because if you do come off, you can hit walls. Which is unfortunately exactly what my mate Flonny found out last week in his S14. But it's alright, luckily it was only a small hit. Now I do really enjoy going to these um, circuits, but I did find both times that I didn't get quite as much seat time as what I did at Santa Pod. Now that could have been down to just the days that I went, I mean it was the middle of winter as well, so maybe the Santa Pod's a quieter time then. But I definitely did get more time in the car at Pod, which is why again I think it's the best place to start. One thing I will quickly say is that all three of the th places that I've been to drift, Pod, um, Teesside and Three Sisters, the staff and all the marshals have always been absolutely sound and yeah, it's always, it's always really good vibes when you're on a drift day. I mean, track days always tend to be a bit strict and 
it's quite easy to get into trouble, but I don't know, on these drift days they seem a bit more casual, which is always nice. Be aware that you will spin out and try not to get embarrassed because everyone does it. If you go and watch a drift day you'll soon see that even your most favourite internet stars will slip out all the time and you know that one perfect run certainly for me being a newbie um, still hasn't even come yet. You're not going to be able to go out there and just boss it. You know, you've got to wait and there's a grace period when it comes to learning this thing just like anything. Just be patient, keep going, keep spinning out and you'll keep having fun and you'll improve. Again, I'm far from an expert. I wouldn't even say I'm good at this yet, but I'm getting there. And that's how I think is, you know, every time I spin out, every time I make a mistake, you just learn from it and you keep going. But you need to push your car. You need to make these mistakes or else you'll never find out what your car can do and what you can do. One of the hardest things for me to do was to let go of the wheel. Now, as you can see on my first drift day over at Free Sisters, I was entering some corners and I was not letting go of that wheel. I kind of I kind of knew that I had to, but I just didn't feel safe and I thought my hands were best placed right on that wheel. Now when I went back to Free Sisters after doing the T-side and Santa Pod drift days in between, I knew that letting go of the wheel was key, especially when it came to trying to link the corners and transition the car through from left to right. Letting go of the wheel here is crucial or else you will spin and spin and spin. You just need to let the car go and just use your right foot and steer from the rear. Santa Pob was definitely the best place for me to learn this. With nothing but cones to hit on the back session you can really get a feel for flicking the car side to side whilst letting the wheel slip through your fingers. You begin to start steering the car from the rear with your right foot and it's one of the most amazing feelings I've ever had from a car. Like ever. Right, I'm going to end the video here. This is meant to be just a quick test of the new microphone that I've bought. I hope it sounds good. Um, so far I've spent 6 hours on this and it's almost 1am, so I'm going to go to bed I think. So I hope my uh, voice hasn't sent everyone to sleep by now, but hey, go out and drift. It's really good. I'll not be drifting for a little bit because I'm going to concentrate on getting the DC2 ready for the Nürburgring. But I really can't wait to get back out, so... Everyone needs to go out and try this at least once.